Good morning. Happy Thursday. Um, today I thought I would do a day in my life um, as a first grade teacher. So I thought from wake up, which you already saw, to, you know, getting my makeup on. Makeup does wonders, especially early in the morning. Um, getting everything ready for lunch. I thought I would take you through my full day. So part of that day is it's right now, it is 6.48 uh, a.m. And I just got my lunch ready. That has already been packed since yesterday. But also tonight, I actually have book club. Um, and book club is where I have about six other people coming over and we will get together and we'll talk about our book. Actually, my husband is part of the book club and he just picked um, a short collection of Roll Doll adult stories. Um, not like adult stories, but stories that he wrote for adults, not his kids' stories. Um, and so that is what we are reading tonight and discussing. So after school, you'll see me get ready for all of that, and that'll be a lot of fun. In terms of things that are not fun, let me show you what happened last night. When I got home from school yesterday, we saw that the basement, um, right below this wonderful dishwasher, we saw that the basement tiles had been like completely destroyed. Um, and we knew there must have been a leak coming from somewhere, but we uh, did not find any like wetness. So we need to ask my mom. My mom is over here during the day and I don't know, maybe she cleaned something up. Maybe she thought something spilled, but we didn't see any wetness. So we had to test and see where it was coming from. So we tried to run our wonderful dishwasher last night and it leaks really bad. Of course, a week before Thanksgiving, our dishwasher is broken. So while I'm at school today, Parker's going to see if he can figure out how to fix it or how to get us a new dishwasher if needed in a very timely fashion. That is the plan. Also, like I said, we have book club, which usually means I have a lot of dishes. So that's also going to be fun. I'm going to need to get some Dawn dish soap as a backup. So come along for the ride. On top of the dishwasher, our filtrated water is also broken. So that is hopefully getting fixed today. I think they're coming. In the meantime, I have to use water bottles, which I hate doing, but I need water throughout the day. So this is what we're doing while I'm home. My contribution to tonight's book club is going to be Buffalo Cauliflower Bites. Uh, we read the story called The Great Switcheroo, um, which was a weird story. But anyway, um, so I wanted to pick something where we did like a substitute. So this is, you know, cauliflower bites instead of like buffalo chicken wings or chicken nuggets. So this is the great switcheroo. So I have a little shopping list here. And after school, I'm going to whip this up for book club. I also printed this out and laminated this for uh, one of my students. They are having consistent reversals with these letters. So I wanted to make the lines similar to the foundations lines that we use. And then I have, uh, I'm gonna tape one on his desk, I'm gonna send one home. And then I have a couple extras for the teachers that work with the student too. So just as a quick little check-in for these specific letters. It is 7.13 and I just made it to school, so I'm ready to go. I actually left before Parker woke up this morning. He normally wakes up around seven. Uh, I left like five of, because I wanted to go get Starbucks and I have a bunch I need to do in my classroom today. Um, but he will get the boys ready. I gave them kisses. They were eating their cereal and watching TV and they were off going to, um, they were going nowhere. They were laying down ready to relax until they go to school in about 45 minutes. But in the meantime, there was a fun surprise at Starbucks. I guess everybody that ordered a drink today got a special little red cup. Um, I'm guessing until supplies last, I have no idea. But that was a fun little surprise. Other than that, I have my iced tea lemonade, which I drink pretty much every day. And then since I left so early, I didn't have breakfast, so I grabbed myself a spinach feta wrap. All right, let's hop on into school and see what we've got to do.
wonder what I do when I get here this early because students won't arrive for about another hour. But truthfully, I've always loved having my classroom um, nice and quiet. It's not often that that happens. And now that I have kids at home, it's not often that I have, you know, a quiet space in general anyway. So I like coming in early. I like going through the slides for the day, seeing what I need to do. And then if I'm all set for the day, I get caught up on things that are going to be coming up. So since obviously I'm not going to film during school hours, let's go through the slides so you can see what we're up to today because that's going to help me because that's what I do anyway. All right, when students come in, we will start with some morning play. We took away the morning work for November and December, and then I'm gonna bring it back in January, just to give students some more unstructured time in the morning when they come in and play. Um, it takes them a little bit longer to get off all their winter clothes and everything, so I wanted to make sure that they were still getting that play time. Then we have lunch choices for today, or hot dog and egg salad. Uh, we will, of course, do our morning meeting. I have a whole video on our morning meeting. It's very structured the way we do it today. Um, here is what our morning message looks like. Pretty short and sweet, but I wanted to add in a uh, balanced equation, which is something we are working on. On Thursdays, I like to have a little yoga break, so we do salamander yoga through Scratch Garden on YouTube. It's like five minutes long. It's a fun way to start the day. Then, of course, we go into Hegarty for 10 minutes and Phonics for 30 minutes. In phonics, we are introducing I, which they're already going to know, and then we also have they. Now, these heart word cards, I believe, are from Anne Gardner. Um, I liked how, I think, I, I don't know if I already said this, but I have the heart words on the back wall there, and I was creating them myself, and I, you know, got only about like 10, 15 cards in, and then I was like, wait, why would I do this when I found something that I loved? So I like it here because they highlight the heart part, but then they also, in the heart, put little visuals or reminders of what that sound is going to be. So they is going to make that long A sound. Um, and then we're going to use it in a sentence, I had fun and they had fun, just showing, you know, the singular and plural. Uh, and then we did introduce all yesterday, our glued sound all. I added that to our sound wall back there. It's that little card on the bottom. It's our first glued sound that we learned. So we will review all, hall, tall, mall. Um, and then we are going to get a passage. This is the big mess. This is from Foundations itself. So we will get a passage. They will each get their own with scooping lines. Actually, let me see if I can show you. So this is what theirs is going to look like. And of course it is also on the board, but the hall was such a big mess. Mom was not mad. She did not yell, so on. So I want students to be able to read this. So we're going to do this slowly and accurately first. And then we are going to work on fluency with scooping the phrases and scooping the words. If you have watched any of my fluency videos in the past before, then this is a great time where I will use choral reading, I will use echo reading, um, and then students can do some buddy reading at the end. But first we're gonna go through it to make sure we can accurately decode each of those words before we get into that fluency part. And then of course, why are we reading if we don't understand it? So after we read the big mess, I want students to identify the characters, the setting, and then what happened first, next, and last. That's what that one, two, and three is for. Um, and then if we still have time, we will definitely practice some dictation with floss rule words and um, that glued sound all. Then we go into snack and recess. Even though it is freezing outside, we still go outside, so that's going to be fun. Then when we come back in and after we eat our snack, yesterday we read Owl Moon for the first time and we talked about visualizing the story. So I read each page uh, without showing it to students. I wanted them to visualize it in their head and then I showed them the picture. Today we're gonna talk about making some connections to the text. Um, students were already doing a little bit of that yesterday, so we're going to see what other connections we can make. And then we go into our reading group time. So while I pull this first group over here, my students are going to connect to the text. This one says, if I could go on an adventure, I would go blank. So I want them to just complete that and draw a picture that matches. That's gonna go along with our connection. Many students were talking about fun things they have done with uh, a parent or an adult before, or even times where they went outside at night. Again, it's going to tie into our connections, which was our goal. And then today for reading centers, students are going to go into Seesaw, and I made these decodable sentence scrambles that students have to complete in Seesaw. So there's 10 slides. They will have to put the uh, words up in order and then use the microphone to go ahead and read the sentence. Now I also put Epic down here, but I might change that out because yesterday I introduced my students to Letterbug. Um, 
And Letterbug, I don't know if you're familiar. Let me show you what it looks like on an iPad. So Letterbug is a game that my husband actually made a few years ago, and it is a ton of fun. I just introduced it two days ago, so I added it to their Clever page. And then when they go in, there's gonna be a big glare, but maybe I can move this over. And then basically they can create a little profile here and they can type in their name. So let me do mine. Let's just do MJ, Mrs. Jones. And then when they go in, they can, that's their little bug. Let's go to play. Let's do CVC words. There's different categories and let's do mix it up. So this will include all the vowels. Map. Map. So it says it for them. There is audio. Um, if they need to hear what that word is again, they can click it. So here it's showing them exactly what to do. They need to collect the letters to actually make maps. So they just drag it along. M. And if you can hear it, it's giving them some audio directions. They need to go get the A. And then some of these locks you can only open if you already have that letter, just to kind of guide them and show them how to do it. Map. And then they bring it to the card. There they go. And then after they complete each level, they get like a little prize. Sometimes it's a different skin color for their bug, like they got a new teal one. Sometimes they get a little hat. And if they wanna change it, they can actually go ahead and put that on. And then they get a new one, six. So now they have to go find six. But this will be another option for them at the bottom of after they finish their seesaw activity over here. So after they finish seesaw, they can usually do Epic or Raz Kids, but Letterbug has become an option for them just for this week. And then it will go into a win station. All right, after reading groups, we go into win, which is our 40 minute block. Um, for independent review up at the top here, students are working on spin, say, and spell with floss rule words. Then they will also read and match with floss rule words and then some number line practice um, for addition and subtraction. I liked this one because it mixes up the operations and my students are needing to focus on looking at that operation. And then for independent writing, they are watching the Hurricanes video and then writing about it in their journal. For collaborative math, I think I, I don't know if I already said this in another video, but um, this is what we did last week and we're continuing it this week. They're just filling in some pattern block challenges. And then for collaborative reading, students get their book bins together and they read from their fluency folder and any books I have given them. Um, this obviously has students' names, so that's blocked out, but this of course shows where they are going each day. Um, and this slide stays the same, their names just move. Then we have lunch and recess. When we come back, we do our digital calendar. And then for math, we are diving in. This is our math warm up where um, we have been doing some geometry math warm ups, but today we're going to do these balanced equations. So we're starting off, you know, with some pictures here. There's quite a few of these where they're just cubes and pictures, and then we will move right along to the abstract where it might say three plus one equals five plus two. Uh, and we'll keep it with addition on both sides, then we'll move to subtraction on both sides and then it'll have mixed operations. But I want students to obviously understand that whatever is on this side of the equal sign must equal that side. And of course, we're only gonna do about two or three slides today. This is something that will get practiced throughout the next few weeks. Then these are for math and focus. We're going to name the shapes in these pictures, name the shapes in this picture. We've already introduced 2D and 3D shapes. Uh, and then they're going to try to build this model right here with their, in their groups, we're gonna have some 3D shapes where they try to build it, they try to match that. And then I have a bunch of geometry task cards that students are going to practice today. And it's going to give them opportunities to practice all sorts of different things. With Make Me, this is with geo boards and um, elastics. So they have to make different shapes. And then they also have fun shapes and they're like a flower car, so on and so forth. This one down here is build a shape. So they would need six triangles to build a hexagon, one rhombus and four triangles to build a hexagon and so on. The one up top is just match and clip. This is like a quick, easy attribute one. Which one has three sides? Which one has zero sides? Um, find and circle, I have these for 2D and 3D shapes. They have to circle all of the ones that match the little shape in the corner. And then which does not belong. So put an X through the shape that does not belong and they have to do that by looking at the attributes. But students will get in partners and they will do these task cards. Library is our special today. Then when we get back, we have writing. We have been focusing on combining sentences 
Um, this is just our warm up. Sorry. So just like math, I always do a warm up at the beginning. And this one is combining sentences. So they will have two simple sentences and they have to combine it using the word and. First we do this orally and then I have students pick a sentence and they will write it down. And then we always check for cups. Do they have capitals? Do they understand the sentence? Punctuation and spelling. And then for actual writing today, we have been going through the writing process. I have it over here. Sorry for the glare. Um, so we have already brainstormed personal narrative ideas that we can write about. Everybody picked one and they did plan and say where they, um, this is just the next step. We call it say and sketch. So they're just planning out their idea. Over the last two days, they have taken their say and sketch sheet and then they went ahead and I've explained this in other videos before, but I have them take their say and sketch sheet, which has three boxes. Actually, let me grab one. Here we have an example. Okay. So here we first had our brainstorming sheet, right? So we had different times that we, or different things we could write a small moment or a personal narrative about. So this was a leprechaun's day breakfast, specials in writing he could write about. Um, this is somebody losing his Vancouver game uh, or movie night. So he picked the leprechaun day breakfast that he wanted to write about and we have them say and sketch. So first my dad, you know, got the eggs and the pancakes and they did some labels. Then he's showing everybody's at their seat at their table to eat the breakfast. And then after breakfast, he's saying everything went in the sink. So those were kind of his three steps. And then we take each of these pictures and we give them a booklet that has three pages. This is what I've always done in the past. And they take each one and add it to the page. So first, my dad brought the eggs, is what he wrote, and then he drew a picture to match. Then he wrote, then we ate the pancakes and eggs, picture two. Then, finally, I put my dish in the sink, picture three. What we did yesterday is we went back and we added another sentence to each page. So we kind of slowly keep building off each page. So first, my dad brought the eggs. I was so excited to eat. Then we ate the pancakes and eggs. They were so delicious. <laughs> Let's see. Finally, I put my dishes in the sink and then I ran outside. But basically today I'm gonna to ask students if any of the characters, either themselves or somebody else in their story, had anything to say. And maybe we will draw a little speech bubble or that could add another detail that we can write into our story. So over the next few days, we have something different we're going to focus on and then we'll see if we can go back into our writing and apply it. And then some students are still working on their planning stage. We kind of went over how this is a process that just keeps going around and around and around. And students will be at different parts of the process throughout our writing block. Last but not least, we have social studies for today. And we are talking about the past and the present. And we are actually using Karen Jones's um, curriculum for that. So she does great slides about you know how the past was different, what the present looks like now, and just different ways we can compare. And then we are packing up. We'll be on our way out of here. So that is what our day is going to look like. Um, going through those slides, I think I actually already have everything set up. So I'm gonna go over to my reading area and make sure I have all my reading group stuff set up. I think we're all on day two of a book, so I don't need to get a new book out. Oh, let me show you these. This is something we're doing tomorrow. I had a ton of these cardboard sheets um, for a little monster activity I did during Halloween. But I saw this insert picture here. Um, I saw this cute picture of these turkeys that kids painted on like big cardboard. And I thought we could do something similar with small cardboard. So this might be a total disaster, but we're, oh, also look, see, I knew I forgot something. We're gonna get our all tiles today and we're gonna add them to our magnet boards. I forgot about that. That's what we're gonna do when that all slide was up. So glad I put that out. Okay, so I got each of these ready with just like a little head part. And then my plan, and I don't know if this is going to work. Like I said, this might be a disaster, but my plan is to give students bunches of strips of this uh, painter's tape and they will create a design. They'll do this with me. I'll put it under the doc cam. Um, they'll create a design that kind of looks like this. So we'll start with some straight lines out to the edges and then some straight lines to connect them to make it like a pattern. Then they're going to get bunches of different pinks and oranges and yellows um, and reds and some colors to color in or paint in each feather area and then to so it'll kind of make that mosaic so it could turn out really cute it could also be a disaster we will see all right now that i just spent so long talking to you i have about i still have half an hour half an hour until the kids come in so 
I'm going to, like I said, head back to that reading corner, uh, make sure I have all my stuff for reading groups ready, might clean up a little, gonna eat my breakfast, and I will check in with you later. And it is the end of the day. All the kids have left for the buses, I'm waiting for my own two boys to come on over, and I am reorganizing my back uh, literacy shelf. So that's fun. I decided during pickup, since I have been printing these out and slowly adding them here, that this bookshelf just had the books there, but realistically I want them to be in these folders. So I'm going to put them in order in these size bins, uh, and I'm gonna put them by uh, skill or by unit for foundation. So like these are all the unit one books. So basically these are all of our CBC books. It usually takes Theo and Calvin another, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so to get back here. So give myself a little project because why not? And then I will be getting Starbucks on the way home, even though yes, I did get it this morning, but I think I told you it's book club night. So I need a little extra energy, a little pep in my step. Um, and I also have to check in and see how the dishwasher is doing. Parker said that was going to be his project for today. So we'll have to see how that went. So I'm going to finish this up, grab some Starbucks with the boys, and I'll see you back at home. flashlight fort day? Yeah, so we have to bring a flashlight, and if you don't have one, um, definitely bring more if you have more than one. Okay. And, because you can share them to friends that don't have them. Are you so excited? How and, did you get and it? And also a fort day. How did you get flashlight and fort day? Because we have compliment labels that whenever we get a compliment from, um, like a teacher or, um, um, our teacher or, like, um, yeah, and um, yeah, we'll get the compliment. Um, we'll put a compliment eyeball in like a basket. Okay. And if we, oh yeah, if we um um get all those balls from the container inside the other container, we'll get um a class party. And you earned it. it. Awesome. Yesterday, and um. And I said Fort Flashlight Party, and um, my vote won. Wow, you came up with the idea all yourself? Yeah. Wow! So he came in like a wrecking ball. Step one is get in some comfy clothes. I'm already in my sweatpants and my sweatshirt, and lie down for a minute. Um, Parker was a hero, and he went out and got a brand new dishwasher and installed it today. So that was a wonderful surprise. It's not exactly the dishwasher I would pick, but you know trying to let go because that was all handled by him and that was wonderful. Um, I do need to go downstairs and start prepping my side for tonight's uh, book club. I don't remember what I told you this morning, but for book club, we um, I used to host all of it and do all the menu and surprise everybody and made like a full themed menu. Unfortunately, while I loved that, that is not possible this year with teaching and everything else that I'm doing. So to kind of let go a little, that's my theme, letting go. Um, to kind of let go, I allowed, like most people do for book club, for a, I allowed, do you like that? I finally gave in to the fact that everybody can just bring their own thing. So whoever picks the book, they are in charge of the main course. And then everyone else kind of grabs sides, appetizers, whatever. So Parker picked the book this year, month, Parker picked the book this month and he is doing pizza. Um, from this wonderful place down the street. So he's grabbing that for the main course. Uh, my side, oh, I did tell you this. See, because I was talking about the switcheroo and how we're doing buffalo uh, switch, but buffalo switcheroo, we're doing buffalo bites uh, that are cauliflower. See, it's all coming back. It's been a long day. In terms of school, school went great. We did everything that was on the slides with no, nothing switched up. So we did it exactly the way we had it um, from beginning to end. And tomorrow I am excited to do that turkey project. So that was fun. But all right, I've been laying in bed for about five minutes, just relaxing for a minute before I have to go host. So now I should get up and I should get prepping because looking at the time, they're coming over at about 5.30, it's 4.15 and I need to get them cooking for like 45 minutes, I think in total. It's 20 minutes at first, then you dip it in the buffalo and then 15 more. 
Uh, so that's 35, but with prep and everything, I gotta get going. Let's move. The boys are all downstairs playing a game with um, Parker and my mom. So it's kind of quiet up here. Oh, also, I think I told you too that the water has been broken for a while. <laughs> well, the water people came today and apparently um, it was unplugged. So that was a problem that had been going on for a week, a problem. And we just didn't know. When they came to service the water last week, they must have forgot to plug some pump back in. So that was annoying, um, along with the dishwasher. But here's our new dishwasher. It's just some KitchenAid one. It has like some funky red handles. Like I said, not, not exactly my favorite choice. The handle or the door is heavy, um, but I really like the inside of it. It has the top rack, which kind of goes down and then over. Everything's stainless steel inside. Looks nice. It works. That'll do. This is the recipe I have. That was some other stuff my mom had to get. It's from thefeelgoodfoodie.net. Um, I just searched it up online. I have no idea. I've never tried it before. It had 4.99 stars out of over 1,600 votes, uh, which is always, I'm always going to look at reviews before I buy or do anything. And that's the plan. I doubled the recipe. I already was able to do it on the website, which I love. So we're going to try it out. If it is any good, I will go ahead and link it down below. I'll let you know what I think. And I'm excited to see what everybody else is bringing. I have no idea. So yay. Um, they told it, they said to keep these pretty chunky. So they're like similar to like chicken nugget style. So some of these are pretty big. I need to put them in some batter now and then I will pop them in the oven. Broccoli bites are done. They are great, but I think as I doubled the recipe and the pan was so crowded, they're not as crispy as I would like, but I've tasted them and they taste delicious. So here's what we've got so far. This is the little anthology that all the books were in or that all the short stories were in. These are my buffalo bites with blue cheese and ranch. My sister made mini chicken pot pies. My mom made Caesar salad with some fingers in there, which relates to one of the stories. Uh, my other sister made the potato fingerling, pink fingerling potato skins. And then we have a bunch of pizza. That's a Bianco pizza. Here is margarita pizza, an obscene amount of pizza. And then we're waiting for one more guest and they are bringing the dessert. So we got everything prepped and prepared. Then we're gonna sit and chat about our book. Book club is over, 7.18. So people were here for about like, oh my goodness. That was them getting the bath twice. Um, people were here for like an hour and a half, two hours-ish. And it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of great talks. Our book that we chose for next month is Rock, Paper, Scissors by I think it's Alice Feeney, something like that. It's a very popular book. Um, so I'm excited about that one. And now it is time to clean up what's left over to clean up. So we got rid of all the food, divvied it up, everybody brought it home. Now it's time to clean up and watch a show. Parker and I have been watching Lessons in Chemistry on Apple TV. I read that book and loved it. Um, but it's Thursday, so I think I'm gonna watch The Golden Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise. So let's clean. <laughs>
this room done for the night. And this one is still a work in progress. I'm just gonna turn off the lights and call it a day. We've got some puzzles. The boys have been doing some work in here. Uh, we do have some holiday decorations in here. A little cocoa mug station. Cocoa mug, hot coffee. I mean, hot cocoa. <laughs> I'm tired. And then a bunch of outdoor stuff to eventually get outside. But I'm just gonna pretend this room doesn't exist for right now and turn off the lights. Oh, and then of course, handmade dark blue decorations and games for the boys games they come up with. Good night. All right, the boys are finishing up their showers. So I am sitting by my computer for a little bit. Um, everything else is clean and then I will go upstairs to relax, but I wanted to just check some emails that I have. Um, I haven't really sat at my computer too much, but obviously every night I don't do book club. However, pretty much every single night, maybe four uh, nights a week, we have some sort of sports practice or workout or something that the boys need to get to. Uh, so we're pretty busy during the weekdays from school and then after school. Um, and then whenever I'm not busy, I'm usually sitting at my computer, as you probably already know, doing some sort of work for SJT or whatever. So lots of other stuff to do, but it was a wonderful, wonderful night. I'm gonna get to these emails. I have a couple that I meant to answer. Um, and then I will head up to bed. And ooh, the glare from my glasses. We are ending the day, same way we started the day. Hopping back in bed, took off all the makeup, all that fun stuff. And it's actually 8.35, so it's a little later than I wanted to hop in bed. And yes, I do quite literally hop in bed around 8.30, nine o'clock every single night, and I am passed out by 10 at the latest. Um, I have always gone to bed very early. I do not like staying up late. I can't hang. I get way too tired. Um, and depending on the night, sometimes I'm asleep by nine. So I sleep about nine to six, which I know is an obscene amount of hours, but that is usually my, my routine. So Parker is going to come in and we're going to watch lessons in chemistry. I'm going to save Golden Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise for tomorrow. That way, um, because I don't want to start it right now and that way I can fast forward through the commercials or watch it on Hulu or something. So I'm going to call Parker in here and start watching our show. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. I thought it would be fun to take you along for a full day in the life from morning all the way to evening. I saw you at 6.18 this morning. It is now 8.36, so about 14 hours. Um, and yeah, regular day in the life of a teacher. So 
I will talk to you later. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.